Well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's ISAC TechCast in conjunction with our Replication Special Interest Group. My name is Mike Harold, and I am the Executive Director of the International Cyber Issues User Group. I'll be your host for today. Um, we are um, doing this in conjunction with our Replication Special Interest Group, as I noted. For those of you who are not familiar with that, that it, this is a group that meets virtually about every month. Uh, we try and meet monthly. Sometimes it doesn't work with people's schedules, but we do encourage folks to uh, participate in this replication SIG. Everybody will be signed up to the email list for that. So when we have additional presentations, either with MLogic or just as a group on its own, uh, you guys will get notification of that. Uh, we would love for you to, to participate in that process. Uh, ISAG, the International Cyber Issue User Group, for those of you not familiar with us, is the uh, group that is the umbrella organization over all the groups around the world. Uh, we work very closely with Sybase and our partners to bring you as much information as we possibly can. Uh, our goal is in life is uh, to make you guys as successful as you can possibly can be. And in our little logo up in the top right hand corner of your screen, uh, you'll see learn more, earn more. And that's basically our focus. Uh, the more that we can help you, obviously, the more that uh, you can be successful in your career. Um, I'm going to hand over in just a second to uh, Dan Goitin of MLogica. Um, but to look through today's uh, speakers, Jeff Garbus will be our feature presenter. And he will be going through the tips and tricks slide. And Jeff and Amit Pimple will be taking questions and answers from everybody at the end of today's presentation, uh, where you'll be able to participate on that. You can send your questions over the console during the presentation if you'd like to do that. Uh, and I think we're also going to take some live Q&A at the end. So without any further ado, uh, Dan, over to you. Great. Thank you so much for that, Mike. I want to thank everyone for joining today. We're very excited about 2011's events in this Tips and Tricks series with conjunction with ISUG. Uh, keep a lookout as well. We're going to be having a Mastering Your Database Performance webcast coming up this month. Uh, we have many other events planned for going into March, April, um, and all year long. We have a slew of exciting events coming here from Emologica. Uh, you can make sure to join our DBA group on LinkedIn. It's a wealth of information, a lot of questions answered there, and also our events are always posted there as well. Uh, as well as you can find out information at www.mlogica.com. So we'll be doing a series throughout 2011 of this database tips and tricks. It's a monthly event. Uh, some of the topics we'll be covering, rep servers of today, obviously it was ASE, Sybase IQ. Uh, we'll be looking at in-memory databases, other enterprise integration. And we are looking for your feedback. We got a lot of feedback looking for replication as a topic, so that's what today's came from. Uh, Jeff Garbus is one of our featured speakers. We'll at other times have other speakers. We've had such people as Terry Keene and Paul Cornetta present on these. Um, next slide, please. For those of you who don't know MLogica, uh, we are a company focused in three things, information management, resource management, and business intelligence. Always having bleeding edge uh, business intelligence tools and software. Uh, doing different, anywhere data would touch, data consolidation, in-memory databases, and really anywhere that data moves or needs to be secured, you can count on us for consulting and software. Uh, next slide, please. MLogic is offering a very exciting promotion throughout the month of February here. Uh, we're going to be doing, a, at no cost, a one-day performance health check. We'll be doing that remotely, where we will actually have a principal architect uh, do a free day, that's right, a free day of consulting, um, for anyone on this call. To schedule that, you can reach out to Amy Haas at mlogica.com um, or you can get in contact with me by replying to any of the emails you would have gotten in conjunction with this event. Next slide, please. So just to introduce today's speakers, we have Jeff Garbus presenting. Uh, Jeff has written numerous books on Sybase AAC, uh, White Papers Oracle, books and White Papers in Microsoft. SQL as well, um, and is just known as one of the leading minds in the database world. Uh, we also have Amit Pimple <coughs> joining Jeff. Amit Pimple is also a rep expert, one of our principal consultants, very much field experience, um, and he's also helped with much benchmarking and white papers around these subjects as well. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. everybody or good morning depending on your time zone. We're going to be talking about a replication server 
today. Uh, this is more of an introductory than an advanced uh, rep server class. So some of you who participate in the monthly uh, rep server uh, special interest group uh, may find this a little on the basic side, but uh, hopefully it's interesting to you, particularly as we start talking about the things that are new in 15, and we can certainly make the discussion toward the end as lively as, uh, as folks have an interest in. From the top, rep server itself is a separate product from ASE, and the idea behind rep server is to take information from one server and move it to another. That's the whole idea. Now, back in the day, a uh, server could be almost anything. Uh, today, it tends to be ASE, SQL, Oracle, DB2, and those are pretty much the ones that we play in. As a result, Rep Server does have a capability of moving data into and out of those environments as well. Now, when it was originally created, uh, it was originally created uh, by Sybase for ASE. Uh, of course, it was uh, called SQL Server at the time. Rep Server has been around for a very long time, but it's an ASE-based product. So some things that we can do with ASE that we can't do uh, with other products. For example, uh, using it as a warm standby really is uh, critical, uh, you know, critical that you have ASE on here. But in general, it's independent of a source or target uh, DBMS. So you can replicate from Oracle to DB2, from uh, Sybase to SQL Server, from uh, Oracle to uh, DB2. You know, whatever, whatever works for you, whatever you need, uh, we're able to pick that up. So uh, it says here no bias to a particular RDBMS. And in fact, I do know of a lot of Oracle shops that use this uh, as their replication method. Uh, however, uh, you know, it, it is principally uh, was originally intended and uh, gets additional benefits as an ASE product. What our uh, rep server does is, it says here, maintains the reliability of a distributed enterprise environment. And I'm going to translate that to English. What this means is that when you are trying to ship information from one source to another, uh, you, there are some things that you have to pay attention to. Does it need to be transactional? What happens if data is missing? How live does that data need to be? What kind and of latency can we have from source to target. And Rep Server allows you to identify and tune those types of things. So it uh, maintains the reliability. Very important because we uh, can treat the Rep Server as a transactional replication. Try, uh, let me say that a slightly different way. Uh, if you have something in, on site A, you want it to be on site B, Rep Server makes sure it gets there. So. Uh, this is very useful for implementing a lot of different types of things, uh, multi-site applications, uh, disaster recovery. And I, I would say that uh, more shops uh, use this for disaster recovery probably for, than anything else. It's great for warm standby, which we'll talk about again in a little bit. Uh, another very common use for Rep Server is to do some real-time data reporting. Rep Server can be used to copy data from a transactional server to a reporting server. Uh, it, now, keep in mind that we don't have to do a one-for-one -one, uh, replication. We can, uh, for example, uh, just report on current things, or we can push information into slightly different tables on the target, depending on how complicated we want to get, or possibly even replicate into cubes and snowflakes and such. We do ensure the data delivery across the different targets, uh, which is to say if I want to ensure delivery from ASC to uh, uh, SQL or Oracle or both, I can get there from here, which does help for your real-time business needs. Some basic components to the rep server. The rep server itself is a separate piece of software. It is not ASC, and uh, it is not another uh, component. It stands uh, Alone. Now, we'll talk a little bit about what standalone really means, but from a software perspective, it is running as a separate process, potentially on a separate server. It re receives transactions from a primary database and applies the transactions to a secondary. There's also a concept of an ID server. This is relatively recent in rep server days. Uh, and the idea behind the ID server is that this will keep track of the replication servers, plural, that may be running, the databases that are involved, the routes that you're paying attention to, what's coming in and going. The ID server does need to be up uh, if, in fact, you're installing a rep server, creating a new route, uh, and if you're going to be uh, creating or dropping uh, database connections. Uh, that's the piece that pays attention in 